Go lionfish, the pretty pest from the west, is a beautiful predator and a dark omen for all ecosystems it invades. The lionfish's long, flowing fins and its bold red colors do somewhat resemble the mane of a male lion, which is likely where this mean little fella got its name. However, the pretty mane holds a nasty surprise. Some of the fin spines are venomous. It's not that it needs those spines for catching prey, it's used to discourage other fish from eating it. Lionfish are slow-moving carnivores that will eat anything. If they can fit their mouth around it, they will eat it. And since a lionfish can grow up to 18 inches long, that basically allows them to eat damn near everything. In fact, in some areas, they have become obese because they eat way more than they need, which is a very useful adaptation to survival if they stayed in their natural habitat which, unfortunately, they didn't. One lionfish can eat hundreds or even thousands of small fish every year. When researchers dissected a lionfish, they found 21 fish in its stomach. In fact, they observed that the stomach of large adults can expand 30 times in volume to accommodate large meals. Because of this, lionfish can actually survive starvation for up to 12 weeks. When this invader enters a reef, they can and will reduce the native fish population by nearly 70%. They basically mess up the entire ecosystem in that area by wiping out crucial members of the fish society that usually fulfill vital roles in keeping things working. Okay, so how is it possible that a fish with such flamboyant looks can easily eat so many fish? After all, it's not like their prey won't see them coming. Most of the naive little fish are not even scared by the lionfish when it approaches. In fact, they see the lionfish with its big fins as a safe place to hang out, unaware that their safe haven can and will eat them at a moment's notice. So in the end, it's a combination of ambush, patience, and a lot of ignorance from their prey. The lionfish is considered invasive in the Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, and the Mediterranean Sea. And just how did they get there? Studies suggest that the invasion can be narrowed down to just 8 or 12 individuals who interbred after being released off the coast of Florida from, you guessed it, humans. Over time, their eggs spread up the east coast and the Caribbean through oceanic currents, bringing the lionfish invasion to its current size and severity. This doesn't explain how they made it to the Mediterranean Sea, though. Scientists assume that they came from the Red Sea, a native habitat, by simply swimming through the man-made Zuez Canal. In their native waters, such as Palau, there's roughly one lionfish per acre. While in the Bahamas and North Carolina, there have been reports of over 200 lionfish per acre. Their invasiveness is not just because of their hunting skills and eating habits, but because they have very few, if any, natural predators. On top of that, they mature and reproduce super quickly. A lionfish releases about 2 million eggs a year. That is roughly 15,000 eggs every three days. Not only is that a lot of eggs, but the eggs are buoyant and can spread far and wide with the help of ocean currents. That is 15,000 potential lionfish that only need a year to fully mature. When you combine that with how much they eat, you can see how they can quickly outnumber native species. Now, why haven't predators picked up their game in these invaded waters? Well, there are a few fish and birds that will eat the lionfish. But with the lionfish's reproduction rate, these predators aren't making a big dent into the lionfish population. The venomous spikes are also a turnoff for most fish. Besides, the fluffy looks don't really make them an interesting prey anyways. So it's up to us humans to do the lion share of the work in keeping these invaders in check. In fact, there are actually campaigns and derbies in high affected areas. These single or multi-day events encourage participants to catch as many lionfish as they can. There are prizes for quantity and size. Teams can catch them by netting or sparing while scuba diving, free diving, or snorkeling. These events often include cooking competitions and educational shows in order to make people more aware of the situation. Most people don't even know that you can eat lionfish, and this needs to change. 
That is part of what these derbies are trying to do. Encourage more people to not only try lionfish, but to start eating them more regularly. If the demand increases, more fishermen will focus on capturing them, which will help keep the lionfish population in check. This way, it would be sold just like any other fish on the market. So next time you're diving or snorkeling and you see a gorgeous lionfish, please keep in mind that they are an invasive species. So sparing a few of them for the dinner table would actually help the ecosystem. If this is not your cup of tea, you can always order lionfish the next time you see it on the menu somewhere. If only all our problems could be solved by eating them.